Hi there. Happy Thursday. Thank you for watching. Um, today I want to talk about ideas. One of the most common questions authors get at book signings or author visits at schools is where do you get your ideas? And I heard a really funny response once. I wish I could remember who to credit, but he said, you know, I just go down to the corner and I go in that idea store and they have all kinds of ideas for sale there and I just buy my ideas. And I always wish that um, I could actually do that because that would be awesome uh, since I often spend time, lots and lots of time coming up with my ideas. I know for some pe some authors, ideas are easy. That's not the case for me. I really have to work at my ideas. Sometimes they come um, from, you know, they can, I've, all my books have different stories. You know, sometimes they come from uh, a news story. You hear a little bit of something or a conversation that gets you thinking. Sometimes it's, I, I've had song lyrics that have inspired books. I've had other books inspire my books. I mean, and that's often what happens is you see a little piece of a story and you go, what if I took that piece and expanded on it or something? I think that's fairly common. Um, but it's just really interesting how ideas can literally come from anywhere. And honestly, one thing I do a lot is when I'm actively trying to find a story to get, you know, lost in and, and work on is I'll sit and just brainstorm for a while, you know, just write down things that interest me, things that um, are in the news recently, or you just kind of just sit and like write things down until something kind of pops out. And for me, I usually have to have what I call sort of three different seeds that you kind of plant in your um, dirt of, you know, creating a story before you can kind of grow that story. Um, so for example, I specifically remember um, in 2009, the recession, there was a really, really bad recession going on. And I was driving home from work one day and things were just bad. Like so many people had lost their jobs and um, houses were, you know, going into foreclosure right and left. And I remember thinking, I want to write about something happy. Like, what can I write about that will just bring a smile to my face? When a reader hears the word, it will bring the smile to their face. And I just literally started, uh, you know, thinking of words that make people happy. You know, unicorn, rainbow, kittens, puppies. And I just, in my mind, I kind of was going through a word list. And, and then I landed on the word cupcakes. And at, this is at the height of when cupcake shops had just exploded. And I'm like, hmm, that would be fun to like visit a cupcake shop in my mind every day as I'm writing. And so that became the first seed of It's Raining Cupcakes. And I was looking for the book to show you. I actually am all out. I need to buy one. So I have one on my shelf. But these are the two books that followed It's Raining Cupcakes, Sprinkles and Secrets, frosting and friendship. So if you like stories about baking or that kind of thing, um, you might want to check those out. But anyway, so I had the first seed, but I didn't, I needed more because where's the conflict, right? Where's the tension? Where's the problem? Every book sort of, if you're going to have a plot, you have to have something that the main character wants um, and isn't able to easily get. And so when I sat down to write, what kind of just came to me was I had a character who really wanted to travel, but there were lots of things keeping her from that. Like she just sort of dreamed of going, you know, she lived in this small town and had never really been anywhere. And she really wants to. She has an aunt who's a flight attendant and sends her postcards from all over the world. And so that became, you know, another seed is that she wants to travel. That's what she wants to do. And she wasn't able to do it. And how, how is she going to, you know, try and fulfill that desire? But, um, I was thinking yesterday, writing in a notebook here, 
that some of the best books have really exceptional settings. Um, and I wrote some of them down and let's see if any of these, you know what they are. Um, I was thinking of the book where it's a hot, dry summer camp for boys who are bad. And that is the book Holes. And if you've never read it, it's an incredible book. I've been thinking about that book a lot lately. And I read an interview um, with the author, Louis Sacker. Is that how you pronounce it? I'm not sure. Anyway, he said that for this book, the setting is what he started with. It, and so that was really interesting. He said usually he starts with a character, but this book, it was the setting. Um, and I see that. Like you read the first few pages and it's all about this camp that has lake in the title, but there is no lake. It's just dry, hot, you know, land. Another setting, a graveyard. The Graveyard book by Neil Gaiman. Both of those books are Newbery winners, by the way. A Faraway Land with a Wizard and Munchkins. We all know that one. Um, a Rundown Mall with a Gorilla in a Cage. That's an interesting setting, right? Um, a School for Wizards. That's a good one. Uh, so I was just making notes because I think... Uh, my task right now is I want to find a really interesting setting and that that will be the first book, the first seed of my book that I need to start writing. And I've just been sort of floundering around trying to figure out what to work on. So I'm in this idea phase right now of trying to figure out um, what I want to do. And so I just thought I'd talk a little bit about ideas and get you thinking if you ever have um, a problem coming up with an idea for a story in school or whatever um, those are some ways that I kind of go about coming up with my idea and a lot of it is literally just writing things down until something sort of like oh that's I like that idea all right I hope you guys have a good day thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time